All right, folks, it is time for a June garden tour. The truth is, I also filmed a May garden tour, but what I'm learning in this first full year of doing videos of the garden is that this is a really busy time of year, this like April, May, June area of um, gardening. And while I've been trying to take videos as I go, I haven't really had time for editing. So you may find that I end up putting together a volley of videos of stuff that all has already happened um, a little later in the summer. But for right now, I thought I could probably capture, probably could capture um, the June garden um, pretty quickly and hopefully with minimal editing so I can get it out to you because it's so good right now. It would be a shame to miss it. So with that, let's, uh, let's get started, shall we? All right, so maybe I'm showing you my best thing in the garden first, but frankly, I just can't help it. One of the best things about June um, in zone 6B here in Michigan is the fact that my roses are blooming. Um, I've been telling folks online, this rose hedge is years in the making. Um, and it's not really even done. Um, <laughs> the challenge here is that I didn't plant all of these roses at the same time. Um, some, especially over here, are newer additions to the family. Um, and the goal that I have is to try to get them all looking kind of like this, where they're all the same height and creating this beautiful ombre effect. But roses take time to establish. And so <laughs> we're not quite there yet. Um, and also it's tricky because some roses are very new. Like this one on the end, super new, um, but it seems to be doing a bit better than a rose, kind of the same age, if not a little older right here. So there may also be some light conditions at play here. I mean, we'll just roll with it. Worst case scenario, I've got gorgeous roses and they're not all the same height. I'm okay with that. All right, let's take a little tour and get a little closer. All right, first I'm gonna start with something that's not a rose, but that I really enjoy having as part of my rose hedge. So much so that I didn't dig it out to make room for more roses, and that's this giant hosta. Um, this and its buddy over there at the end came with the house. Um, so I don't know exactly what kind it is, although I think it might be Blue Angel, given the cast of the leaves, this beautiful, this beautiful blue color and the size. Um, and it is just gorgeous. Um, besides being absolutely gigantic um, and holding water and these beautiful little gems like this, um, it's just an amazing plant and I hope to keep it around all the time. Um, and right now it is also in bloom along with the roses, these pretty white flowers. Um, so let's go down the rose line here. First off, we have Sunshine Daydream. This is a yellow rose that I planted last year. It's actually a memorial um, to my dear departed Pug Pugsley. Um, he, we lost him last year. And one of his favorite things to do was to pee on the finest plants in the garden. And here he liked to pee on my roses. So I thought, you know what? A yellow rose for him is pretty appropriate. And Sunshine Daydream has been a great, great addition. Um, seems to do really well, very hardy, hasn't really, you know, knock on wood, seen a lot of disease. And these blossoms are beautiful. I mean, they start out with this kind of golden yellow, but they age to what looks to me like sort of a buttered popcorn. Um, just really, really loving it. And it just sets the tone for the ombre down the line, um, where we go from yellow to the sort of peachy, like light peach color or co I've said coral, but I feel like it might be more peachy. And that is, this is Proven Winners At Last Rose. Um, you can see the blossoms are a little bit smaller um, than the one before the Sunshine Daydream, but it is a ridiculously prolific bloomer. <laughs> I've been deadheading it, but it still has a ton of blossoms on it. This is, <laughs> The one thing I will say about At Last is that it tosses off its petals pretty readily. Um, you don't get a long bloom on this one, but there's so many of them. I don't think I mind. But yeah, it starts off more of this blushy peach and then ages to a lighter one. It has a great, 
like classic rose smell. Um, I wish I had smell vision so that you could just enjoy with me the fact that the rose smell just wafts <laughs> right around here. Um, convenient because it's by the garbage cans. Um, but anyway, that is at last. Next down the ombre, we come to, like, you're going to hear me say this is my favorite rose, but I will say this is my favorite red rose that I have. This is called Hot Cocoa. Um, oh, you see this one is like an aged example. All of these roses, I think something I really love about them is how they change color when they're young blooms versus old blooms. So these are some younger newer hot cocoa blooms and you can see that purple smoky cast on them but they're still a lot brighter red but when you get to the older blossoms it's really just a lot less saturated and we always have a party Woo! Um, I, whenever I deadhead my roses and the blossoms fall off I like to throw them in the air because it's always a party when you're playing with roses but yeah that's hot cocoa um, actually this is one of the like hot cocoa is one of the flowers that I saw in the Portland Rose Test Garden when I went to visit a while back. And so it was cool to actually go get this and have it in my own garden. All right, next up is Beloved. This is more of a pink red. Um, honestly, don't let her hear me say it, but this isn't really my favorite red. Um, I don't know how I didn't notice that when it's open, it's more of this like very simple, like single petal sort of situation. They're really pretty, don't get me wrong. It's a very pretty rose, um, but I was hoping for something that was more doubled up like like the other ones in this line. I really like a very romantic compound sort of rose, but they are still beautiful. I mean, look at that. Originally, I had planted Mr. Lincoln here, which I think would have fit the bill better for what I was looking for, but it died. So I will appreciate Beloved for what it brings. Um, and it's certainly a prolific bloomer, so that's really nice. Get lots of flowers. All right, so from the smoky red to the pinky red, we move to a pink. This is a real standout to me, and that's um, Sweet Mademoiselle. This is a hybrid tea rose. First off, you can see how big the blossom is compared to, you see, what um, Beloved is like. Um, and even like hot cocoa, I think is a grandiflora. Should also have a big flower, but still it's about the width of my palm. And then, then this is Sweet Mademoiselle. Um, it is a gorgeous rose, has a great smell. Um, it gets these cool, like almost watercolor painting variations in the color. And it just, like, I feel like the blossoms stay around for a really long time compared to some of the other ones. And last year, I really only had one <laughs> bloom, I think, that I could keep an eye on. But this year, uh, she's really taken off because the original plant was here. Let's see, we've got some beautiful buds and flowers open. Look at just beautiful. I mean, look at that. It's just, ah, I love roses. Um, really romantic, beautiful shape. And then... It put off this summer, this spring, it put off a whole new shoot. So this is a whole new cane setup. I wasn't sure if it belonged to this or the Lavender Simplicity right here, but it is definitely more Sweet Mademoiselle, which I am thrilled because that is just, it is just a wonderful rose. Um, so I'm glad it likes where I put it. Um, Cause sunshine is limited in my um, yard. Like depending on where you live, I live in suburbia and um, there's a lot of mature trees, which is beautiful. Girls, <laughs> sorry, my dogs are having an argument. Um, but it's hard to find sunshine and roses need a lot of sun. They prefer to have good drainage. Um, thankfully, this spot is working for them. They like it. Um, okay, but as much as they like it, here's a learning opportunity that I'm still trying to figure out. This was actually the very first rose that I planted in this in this hedge um, and it's called Lavender Simplicity. Um, I bought it because it has, at the garden center, it had this amazing citrus smell that I could pick up from like, not a mile away, but you know, from far away, it drew me in. Um, and it did really great the first year, like so great that it was taller than I was by fall. Um, and then I think next year, 
the next year in the spring, I pruned it back really, really hard. Um, I think possibly too hard because it leafed out like this, but it, it didn't have any blooms. This year I did not prune it. In fact, I didn't prune anybody really. I didn't get around to it, but I'm hopeful that if I continue to give it fertilizer and let it reestablish, maybe it will give me some blooms because it's just really beautiful. But yeah, that's something to be careful of. Like I, I thought it's a hedgerows. It can take a whole lot of punishment. And I think I just cut it way too far down. I think it was like down there. Um, but yeah, be careful. <laughs> Maybe start with only a third of your rose height and work your way back. But hopefully that will come back so that we'll go from this pink Sweet Mademoiselle to a lovely lavender, which is a little bit of a pink cast. And then, oh man, to another dramatic addition to the garden. This is Ebb Tide. This is my purple part of the ombre. Now Ebb Tide, um, it has these, it has tiny petals, but it has like about a bajillion of them. Um, over time, I'd like to get better at knowing the names, <laughs> the different anatomical terms, but I believe it is also, oh wait, I could look on its sign because I was going to say, yeah, Ebb Tide is a floribunda, um, which my understanding is that usually means it has a lot of flowers, like multiple flowers, whereas like a tea rose might have one bloom on a stem. Floribunda has a bunda flora. It has a bunch of floras, a bunch of flowers. Um, okay, what's great about Ebb Tide is that depending on the temperature of its environment, the blossoms can definitely be a different color. Um, the, this one bloomed when it was cooler, so you can see it's a little more purple smoky. Um, but this one's coming out now, it's actually getting a little warmer. You can see it takes on more of like a pink cast. And if it's been really hot, like some of those 90 degree days we've had, um, it'll be much brighter, intense fuchsia, like you can kind of see on the inside of the stem. Um, so it is really beautiful, <laughs> beautiful purple, easy to see from far away, and it has this deep clove scent. Um, you may know it, but something that I appreciate about roses is that they can smell beautiful, but also smell different. Um, some roses have what's considered the classic rose fragrance. Some are citrusy, like poor little lavender simplicity. This one is described as having a, um, like a spicy clove scent and it is just really beautiful. Like again, wish I had smell a vision for you all. You can see it's got a ton more blossoms ready to come out. So the show is not over. Ooh. Okay, and here is another one of my new additions to the garden. I'm gonna touch this blossom after I film it because I think it's about ready to go. Um, but this is a new rose that I planted as a bare root. Um, that means it's delivered, it's delivered as that, you see that big stem down there? It comes just basically as a root system with a stem, no leaves, um, but you plant, a bare root in the spring and it actually I'm finding they take off a lot better um, than the ones that I plant as whole whole roses in the fall so over here um, this one I planted last fall um, as a whole leafed out plant and it's doing okay but you know I gotta say this bare root is doing better who is this you may be asking this is just Joey. Um, my lovely mother-in-law got this for me as a gift it's from David Austin um, I've always wanted some roses from David Austin, although I don't know if just Joey is a David Austin rose. That I can't remember, but um, for perspective, this is the size of the bloom. Um, it's a very similar color scheme, I would say, to the At Last, although it's more orange than pink, than the pink of the, of the At Last. But what also strikes me as different is the petals are much bigger. The blossom is huge and it does have a different fragrance. Um, but yeah, it's just beautiful um, and already blooming. It's already got other um, blossoms getting ready to open. So that's pretty awesome. It seems to like where it is too. All right, and then last in the hedge, um, I was talking about this one a little bit earlier. This is Lady of Guadalupe. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe, it, oh, it's got some little blossoms. You can see it. Um, and I'm a little worried that this dinosaur pasta over here is shading it out. So I might, <laughs> look at that. Uh, just 
this hosh is so tough that I'm pretty sure I can just rip, well, not pretty sure, I've done it before. You can rip off some of these leaves, leaves to give it more sun. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe is a pink rose with a lovely ruffled edge to the petals and a beautiful, sweet scent. Um, I added her just because I realized I had enough space. <laughs> you know, I kind of departed from the ombre scheme um, once I started adding just Joey, although it really matches. It just, it's no longer a gradation. I don't know, why are we not feel, not zooming? There we go. Um, but that's okay. Your roses can also just be what you like. Um, plant, I mean, color schemes are great, but so are just plants that you enjoy. Whew. <laughs> so that took us about 15 minutes, but that is um, the rose border, which the rose hedge, which I would say is probably the best thing happening in the garden right at this very second. Um, something else that is taking off are my um, plant sacks. These are Al's plant pouches. Um, and I filled them up with the petunias that I started from seed. Um, everything down here is the, um, what, raspberry opera supreme? Supreme opera raspberry? Um, and then up at the top, I believe I have two of the supertunia cappuccinos. So it'll be more like a pink veined down here and then a little froth at the top of cream. Mainly because I just didn't have enough of these and I thought that might look pretty. Um, and I think, Let's see. Yeah. I think you can see, let's see if I can get this to, I feel like my camera, my phone is getting toasty and it is having trouble zooming, but this is a cappuccino that's getting ready to blossom. Um, so we're almost to the point where the petunias are open, but still not quite. Still the roses, uh, the roses show at this point. Okay, what else do we got? Well, the truth is a lot of the rest of the garden is just still getting ready. Um, I've been able to plant my whiskey barrels in front of the entrance, um, including a whole ton of dragonflies, lantana, um, superbina sparkling amethyst, um, more snapdragons. These are actually from last year. I can't remember what color they were, but they came back. They probably reseeded. They're probably not the same ones, but um, still, that was, that's always cool when somebody comes back that you didn't expect. And then some of my petunias and my fashionista ballerina, ballerina fashionista um, pink salvia has already bloomed once and I've cut it back. Ooh, it's hot in the sun. Well, that's good. That's what the plants like. All right, here are my two blueberry bushes. I believe this is their third season. Um, yeah, I think it's their third growing season. And what's really exciting here is that we've got blueberries, at least on one of them. Um, don't have blueberries on the other bush. And also I'm keeping an eye on this because I feel like it's got chlorosis going on. So I need to check the pH of the soil because I know blueberries like it really acidic. And that might be why it's looking like this is not a good sign. Um, not the end of the world, but having it be so yellow with these green veins, that suggests chlorosis. So I'm going to figure that one out. Stay tuned. Oh, and then the reality is that this is still, the patio is still kind of the safe staging area. Um, <laughs> it's getting cleaner as we go, um, but there's still things like brush that I'm sweeping up, patio cushions, empty pots. That's, that's real gardening, and I think it's important you see it. Um, grow stock is planted, um, or green stock. I think it's green stock. Gosh, I always get that wrong. Um, but I had to go get new strawberries because I waited till June to get strawberries and most strawberries already yield in June. So they were, it's hard to find new plants, but I found them. Um, man, I wish you would just focus on purpose phone. Um, but yeah, we got some strawberries here. Um, so that's exciting that's happening. Um, girls! Oh my gosh. Um, let's see, we've got, I planted herb seeds, um, direct sow here on this row of the grow stock. Um, I think that might be my oregano and thyme. And then this is basil. So I just alternated so I could hopefully get a lot of each. Um, and lettuce, I grew some lettuce and that's doing pretty good. What I do is I, the sun only shines this direction. 
um, for the most of the day. So I continually rotate, rotate the grow stock because it's on wheels. It's on wheels, we got options. Um, so you can see over here, doo -doo -doo -doo, the lettuce is a lot more lush. I need to pick some of it because um, that was what was facing the sun. And my mint came back because mint always comes back. Uh, mint is as hardcore as you can get. I feel like when it comes to garden plants, they will come back and they will live everywhere. So it stays, it's pretty invasive. So that's why it stays in its container. Stay there. Um, otherwise I've been planting up my containers with the coleus and so coleus and salvia that I started from seed. Um, some of the salvia plants I didn't pot up early and they're still tiny, but others I potted up earlier this season and they're already pretty darn big. Um, and then I've got some of my arrangements. I have footage of this, um, but I just want to always shout out that the Prince Tut grass, the papyrus grass is just so good. Always have to have it because it's just beautiful structure. Um, definitely that thriller in the thriller filler spiller um, recipe trying. That's some of my Silver Falls di dichondra that I'm trying to get. Um, to actually replace buying stuff in the garden center. We'll see. But yeah, um, like I said, things are kind of clearing out all the, all the patio containers are planted, but there are some stragglers like tomatoes. I still have extra tomatoes left over and I'm trying to decide if I want to get more um, raised bed soil and plant them, or instead do I want to try to give them away? I haven't decided yet. Um, these are both cherry tomatoes. This is honeycomb hybrid, and this is Napa grape, which we grew last year, and it was super tasty. Um, and I'll show you it's uh, the ones I already got. Hey, simmer down. Um, in behind the garage in a moment. And here are um, Super Tunia Vista. Uh, oh, silver, silver title? Yeah, I think these are the silver title, not Super Tunia Vista Snowdrift. These are... Um, snow tidal petunias. Um, the whole idea is that they get real big. Oh, and I need to water everybody. Um, they get really big and mounded and cover a lot of landscape. Um, but I'm still waiting for my tulips to die back because that's where I want to put them. Uh, so we're in a little bit of a holding pattern. And the reason why you see this outside of its normal tray is because it rained last night and normally that means the tray floods and I don't want Petunias don't love being flooded. Um, so I was hoping to avoid that, but I think it didn't rain that much. <laughs> oh well. All right, more coleus from seed and salvia from seed. Oh, I also need to water over here because I did the same thing with a bunch of marigolds. Um, you know, at this time of year, you can really just throw marigolds in a pot and they'll be fine, but I wanted to be able to tuck these in anywhere I wanted. So not really sure who's who at this point because I pulled them out of their trays and then didn't do it in a way where I know what tray was what. So it'll be a surprise. Straggler coleus. Again, it's kind of the same deal. Like there, there will be spaces to tuck in these guys somewhere. Um, just haven't really decided where yet. But that's kind of where we are. We're like down to the leftovers, um, collecting all my pots <laughs> to store back away um, once seed starting season is over. These are my weirdo coleus that, um, I got because one of my friends on Facebook had gotten one and I was real jealous. And so I found a local source. I think this is seaweed, Blair Witch. Yeah, Blair's Witch. Um, oh, tags are right here. Um, Coleus under the sea, sea urchin copper. So this one is also under the sea. And Coleus under the sea, copper coral. So that's this guy. I just thought, boy, these are so weird and cool. I highly doubt if I'm even able to collect seeds that they'll come out the same way, but that's gonna be a sweet experiment. All right, so let's see. Oh my gosh, we're already up to 23 hours. There's so much good stuff. But I wanna make sure I catch this one because it's really special. Um, you can see this, this plant with the tiny little leaves. This is a rambler rose that um, it's actually really special because it's an offshoot from a rambler rose that my grandma and grandpa had planted um, rambling along a stone fence in their house. 
um, back in West Virginia. Um, and my mom and dad were able to grab some offshoots of it and propagate it. Um, and I was finally, after, after we were all able to get vaccinated, finally able to get an offshoot and bring it here and find a good spot for it. And it seems pretty happy. It's not, this area is not as sunny as the rose hedge, but it's sunny enough that I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, cause what I, why do I say that? Um, you can see it's putting off these new green stems. Um, the old growth is kind of down here, but when I see a plant putting on new growth, um, for a sustained amount of time, which it's been weeks now, that suggests to me that it's got its root system all established. It's sucking up water and nutrients. Um, so it's probably going to be okay. Um, we'll see how it overwinters, but I think it'll be fine. Um, and I'm trying, this darn phone is not focusing today. Um, it has these tiny little, um, burgundy red flowers all over. You might, you might be able to spot all the different buds. Um, and you might be wondering, why is this called a rambler? Um, cause it certainly, um, is not a climbing rose and a climbing rose is supposed to be a pretty vigorous grower that can climb up um, trellises. Ramblers are super vigorous um, and they ramble across the ground and up the trellis. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this one once it really takes off because you can already see it's starting to come out this way. <laughs> um, and it's supposed to be a vigorous grower. Uh, so for now it's very demure, but that may change. All right, next up is a new clematis that I planted. Um, I actually have the label, which will make it easier because there's no blooms just yet. Um, this one is called Pink Champagne Clematis. Um, I've tried to grow clematis before in a different area of my yard um, and it didn't like it. <laughs> I actually, I think it came back, but it's never really thrived. So this year I thought my neighbors next to me, they have their clematis east facing like this and I thought well I'll give it a try maybe that's what it really needs and yeah I think that's exactly what it needs um when I bought it I trained the vine up to maybe about maybe about here um and since then it's put on plenty of growth and reached all the way up to the top so I would be super blessed I would feel very blessed if it decided to bloom this year um but it is a perennial and as my mom reminds me all the time with perennials, first year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap. Um, so even though this one seems like it's leaping, it might not really be ready to totally show off. We'll see. But the other thing I know about clematis, and I'm trying to abide by here, is that they like their heads in the sun and their feet in the shade. And that's what I'm trying to do, although I can see right now it's getting a little bit of sun. Um, but trying to put them behind these day lilies so that in the morning where they get when they get the most sun it's shaded um and well drained because they they like that for their feet their roots i should say but you know it's cuter when you say clematis feet but it seems to be doing well and um i think the red of the rambler rose with the with the uh, red and pink of the clematis is going to be really pretty okay now the challenge <laughs> the challenge with uh, trying to show you every single rose in bloom at once is that they don't always all bloom at once. And this is a great example. Um, this is another new rose. <laughs> like I swear I had no room, no room for more roses. Um, and then I found some room and just made it happen. Um, this is Tangerine Skies. Um, it's an arbor rose. It should, if it's happy and over time should be able to be trained up this trellis. Um, it is, I'm trying to see if there's any petals that would do it justice. I don't know if that's really gonna do because it's already dried out, but it has a lovely, you know, I'm a sucker for that peachy pink color. That's for sure. You can probably tell by now. Um, and this one is more of like a gold, a golden, like it leans less to the pink and more to the yellow and orange. It's really pretty. And right now it seems pretty happy. Although I've never had a climbing rose before, so I'm gonna have to read up and learn more about how to train it. Um, Cause I know sometimes they say they're climbers, but they still need some encouragement. And it's got more blooms, so fingers crossed, um, we see more goodness before the season is over. Um, real gardening again. Um, I had to clear out my planters um, on the front porch because the 
lovely pansies that I had planted in spring. These guys were starting to look a little droopy. Um, and one of the things I delight in doing um, from the chaotic evil side of my heart is to, <laughs> when I clear out old, old planters and the flowers don't look that bad, um, I like to dump them around the yard. <laughs> Like this is just, I just <laughs> threw them up against this fence because um, they'll actually stay pretty nice for a little while and get a little cast of color from far away. I mean, up close they look pretty not great because they aren't doing too great. But I thought, might as well use the color while I can. And sometimes these things, the stuff I dump actually seeds itself or comes back and it's a nice surprise. So that's what I'm doing with that. And again, with its the ornamental kale that came with it was super awesome but kale does not like hot temperatures at least i know ornamental kale doesn't um so there's no way i was gonna keep that in the pots <sighs> so that's why i tossed it there <laughs> meanwhile we're having an epic dog battle here's the other side of the real garden <laughs> that i wanted to share with you ah girls um and that's that with all of my pots I mean, you have the choice when it comes to container gardening to keep your soil for several years, mix in new stuff with the old. When it comes to my containers, I really like, it's such a small space and the nutrients get used up, I think pretty well by the end of the summer that I just dump them. <laughs> um, and so this is what happens. Once I've got all my plants established, I will come in with a shovel and break this down and smooth it out because I can use this stuff to help build up my yard in different ways. Oh my God, you two are so dramatic. Um, but it doesn't look that great right now. <laughs> but trust me, it's very therapeutic. Um, but it is, it's like the staging area. So I try to get ready to put stuff away that I don't need or I haven't found a home for yet. Um, I just kind of put it up there. Um, and I guess the third real gardening admittance is that our grass is, <laughs> our grass is not in great shape. Um, I think if we had a rough winter and with the fencing installation, this used to all be covered in grass. And of course I should probably also blame the dogs because they don't help. Um, so I reseeded the lawn this spring and like kept it watered, but it really only took in the shady spot. So <sighs> it gets real dusty and I got to think about, oh my God, what I want to do instead. There's tons of weeds here. I don't love it, but um, when you're only one person gardening for fun, you got to kind of prioritize. Hi. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's go check. Um, this is the other sunny spot in the garden um, behind the garage. Um, trying to take nice advantage of it. Something different from past years is now we have a really tall fence, which is great because the dogs um, can't bother the neighbors and can't really jump and escape which is good because harley is um made of springs as far as i can tell um possibly part tigger um so the goal here was not to put any planters on the ground over here like i used to have these used to be over there for tomatoes but i didn't want them to be there <laughs> in part because it was getting really crowded too, but also I didn't want to create big springboards. Um, they really love to get at this area and bark at the neighbor dog, whereas they don't love to do it right here as much. So I'm just leaving them there as enrichment for the dogs because <laughs> they like to jump in them anyway. Oh, I know this is a little random, but I wanted to share it. This is where I planted a clematis before. Um, see, by this time of the day, it's pretty darn shady. So I think that was part of the challenge. But what I noticed just recently <laughs> right here, I think, I think that's one of them coming back. That leaf shape really looks like clematis to me. Um, and I'm going to bet that it's uh, Brother Stefan, which is the purple, like blue purple clematis that I planted second after the first clematis, um, the Guernsey cream died. So my goal is to replant this one over near the other clematis that's happy, and then we'll find out what it is. What the heck is it? Who knows? Oh, all right. Sorry, it just gets so hot in the sun. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Here's my uh, rose tree that still has a lean on it. <laughs> I planted it what I thought was straight up and down and it wasn't. Um, I had it in a, like a collar and frame set up last summer. 
Um, and it helped, but I feel like it just leaned again. So someday I'll come through with some strong people and repot it. Um, but it's still beautiful for right now. Um, originally it was at the end of this um, pathway, but again, I don't wanna give the dogs springboards to jump, jump in other people's yards. Hashtag gardening with dogs. Um, <laughs> um, it is really a beautiful rose as well. They all are, um, except maybe the beloved one, but again, don't tell her I said it. Um, we missed the blooms on these, on the this rose. Oh, I didn't even see what kind it was. So this is a tree rose version of white licorice um, rose. So I leave it to the professionals to train this rose up into a tree um, form. And they were on sale at the end of one season. And I thought, boy, that would be sweet to just put wherever I want in my yard. Um, so I brought it here. Now, it needs to fill in a little bit. I pruned it to try to keep the the crown open and, and ventilated, but it's a little sparse right now. We'll see how it does over here in this new location. Again, this part is not super sunny. I could, oh, that's a good thought, Amber. I might want to move it right here. Um, it would get more sun, something to ponder. Again, that's what's great about containers. You can move stuff around. Um, there are a ton of weeds down here. <laughs> These are not, these are not what I want. Um, I've been pretty lax about weeding. Ow! Ooh, you know what? I'm not going to do that right now because I still got some uh, pruned rose stems down here. And I don't really want to hurt myself. Because um, that would be unreasonable. I've been really lax on the weeding because I've been trying to get everything planted first. Because once things are planted, they're kind of set it and forget it. And then I can start getting into cleaning things up more. But the more time plants get to grow out in the sunshine and the bigger containers, the better. All right. Here's an experiment that I've been trying this year, and that's to grow sweet peas, um, like the flower kind. Um, and I thought I'd try it this year. I'm pretty sure I would have done better if I started them inside so that they could get big before they came outside. I mean, they're doing all right. They look very healthy but they have to get to a certain size um, before they'll bloom. And I'm a little worried that it's gonna get too hot before they do that. Um, so it's kind of like a race to see who wins, um, the elements or the gardener. But also I really wanna plant something in here. <laughs> and I can't until these guys are done. Um, I did it to myself. Um, but this is one of my trellis experiments for this year, I'm trying these little guys, I have video recorded for it, but just haven't put together a video to show you how I put it together. Um, doesn't look great. <laughs> Unless you're like me and you like Halloween, Halloween spiderweb aesthetic, which I do, but it'll work. All right. So next up are my tomatoes. I have four tomatoes here, um, two of the Napa grape and two of the honeycomb hybrid. Um, just so you can see, I want to make sure I don't bother my spider friend in this other one, but um, they each have their own little cage and their friends, because I feel like tomatoes always should have friends, their friends are this variegated nasturtium. This is the Alaska mix, I think from Burpees, I think. Um, that's an experiment. I've never grown nasturtium. I thought that would be fun because I know the flowers are edible and really pretty. Um, and then... For the icing on top, I just threw a whole bunch of marigold seeds in here after I planted everything. And, uh, oh my gosh. And those are starting to germinate. And it, it only really, you don't need many marigolds to germinate for this to really be um, quite a show in a little bit. Because um, the, the tomatoes will keep growing taller. I will keep pruning off the lower leaves as we go, as they get taller. And so it'll be nice to have something pretty down here kind of hide their legs. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if I can reach that from here. Let's try. So I think you can see that there is a flower here. That would be a potential baby tomato, but I'm still not ready to start having them, having the tomato plants focus on making tomatoes yet. So I take the flower off. Um, that's just for now. I want I planted these a week or two ago, maybe a week ago, and I really just want them to focus on growing tall and strong 
before they start putting energy into making delicious little baby tomatoes. So I know tomatoes love it here. This is where they go every year. Um, and <laughs> oh, here's something else I know does really well. Um, that is my pole beans. Um, this is the same variety that we grew last year or called Fortex. Fortex with an F, not V. So Fortex, a really tasty pole bean. Um, and maybe you can tell why it's called a pole bean. Um, it just will happily grow up. Um, any trail should get it to the point where now, look at you, all the way up at the top. I'll tell you what, if there's a fun crop that grows fast and doesn't need much love, pole beans would be it. Um, so I'd recommend that one. We'll see, I don't see any blossoms just yet, but we should be really close. Um, and once they bloom, then we'll start to have little baby beans, which we will celebrate at a later date because they're so adorable. Oh my gosh, hurry, 40 minutes. Impressive. Okay, so my hanging baskets, this is another case of where it's a good idea to pay attention to how your plants are doing, um, especially if you're trying a new location. Um, I planted the, I put the, these plant stakes in a different place than the year before, and it was too shady. I, this one I think was all, looking mostly okay. These are petunias, come on, focus. Petunias, um, one, two, three, four, and then the Dichondra Silver Falls. This one mostly looks okay. Um, and it did even in the shade, but I think it got more sun. Um, the one that made me nervous was this one. Um, I went up after a big rainstorm to it and thought, oh my God, um, I think my Dichondra <laughs> didn't like that. Um, it's like completely gone. The Petunia is still fine it'll come back and maybe one dichondra will come back. But I moved them over here and I think they already look better because they definitely will get more sun um, in this area because this is a very sunny spot. Um, south facing, like this wall is south facing. Um, and so it gets a lot of sunshine all day in our hemisphere. So we'll see, hopefully they get happier. Otherwise, you know what? I'll toss them in the pile. You hear that? I will toss you in the pile and get something else. Um, it's all an experiment and <laughs> you can always start over again. In fact, you know, later in the season, um, the plants get cheaper too. So hopefully we don't have to do that, right? Right? Okay. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Now the only problem I'm seeing with this particular pile of dirt is now that I have dogs that aren't pugs, um, they are finding it to be kind of like their little dig zone. So we'll have to work on that. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's fun, but uh, I don't think that's how we want to live our life. Okay. Man, oh man. It's probably because I could talk about roses forever. That's probably why <laughs> this video is already so long. Um, but I just got one more swath to show you. All right, you gonna stay? I'm gonna make sure dogs don't come out with us. I'm gonna stay. Ah, 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 ah. Good job. That is a good girl. All right. There's really only two more parts of the garden to show you, and that's the side, what I call the driveway garden, and then the front yard. Um, <laughs> uh, this garden, I try to keep a tight color scheme on. Why? Just for fun, just to keep life interesting. Um, I try to keep things in a blue to yellow, sort of with white color scheme. Like blue can be a little more purple, white can be a little more yellow, kind of within that range. Um, <laughs> and you thought that maybe we were done with roses, but there is actually one last one here. That is getting ready to open for the first time. This is Alex's lemonade stand. Um, I thought this would be really beautiful. First of all, it's gonna match the color scheme. It's gonna be yellow. Um, I'll be able to see it right from the kitchen. Um, and proceeds from it, I believe, go to childhood, child cancer, childhood cancer, sorry, words. Um, so all in all, I thought it was a great choice, but this is its first year in the garden. Hostas and Ivy have been around forever. 
In its second year, we have Camelot Lavender Foxglove. Trying to get up real close, probably too close. Too close? Maybe. Um, this is really uh, just a very pretty speckled pattern. Why things are not focusing. Anyway, that's real lovely and enjoying its second year. Um, this is my Bluebird Aster. Um, I have to pinch it back until the 4th of July. Well, I could do it all now, but that'll take time. Um, but this, this guy's gonna get real big. It won't bloom until late October. It's ironic that it's the September birth flower. This variety seems to wait. Uh, so we go. All right, here's my, either my May Nights or my April Nights salvia. I planted two varieties here and I'm just not sure which one this is. Um, but, come on, you can do it. This is getting ready to have flowers. Um, again, there'll be that bluish purple to kind of met, like match the theme. <sighs> and here was a lot of hard work. Um, the, these are my dahlias. Um, I started them outside in these containers. I was a good girl this year and put the grow grids on before they got taller than them, because that makes life a lot easier. So far, we have some here, 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 here. This one I spotted yesterday. Oh, I hope that's in focus, because it's just like really hard. Cinematography is hard, people. Um, got that one there. Um, I'm a little worried that this one hasn't come up yet. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, they will bloom later in the season. And it's all progress towards having something blooming at every point in the garden. You want to know what's harder than cinematography? Finding out that your phone ran out of storage space in the middle of finishing filming your gigantic June garden tour video. Yeah, that's what happened. Please hold. Hopefully I've cleared up enough space uh, that we can finish this off. All right, this is about where we left off with the dahlias. And I thought I'd start with something super horrifying, <laughs> depending on your perspective. I think it's awesome. <laughs> We'd be able to see the dog through there. Um, but one of the cool places about where I live is that there's these, uh, some people call them mayflies. Um, I call them fish flies. I've heard both, um, but they have a little, uh, ritual this time of year every year and they cover all the windows with a bunch of bugs. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I dig it. Uh, I think seasonality is really one of my favorite things about being a human. Favorite things about gardening is that things are always changing. Um, and so that's just one of the special times of year around here. Oh, all right. So I've got a giant hosta that is crowding out my um, banana cream daisy, but banana cream daisy is okay. Chev, uh, black eyed Susan's coming in here in a little bit, but they're not blooming yet. Uh, Phlox is not blooming yet. Um, this peony, this is its second year, maybe third year. I can't keep track very well. <laughs> um, it's taken multiple years to get here. Let's say that this is a Jan van Lowen, Jan van Lowen um, peony really pretty. Um, these actually seem a little smaller than the first blooms. Still going strong. Um, it'll get bigger and bigger every year. Peonies are an investment plant. They can be around for a long time, but they take a while to get going. All right. So this are my, <laughs> this are, these are some of my geraniums that I overwintered. Um, you might recall from another video, uh, stripped them of all their leaves, um, hung them up in a box in the closet. <laughs> And then potted them again in the spring and they're they're doing great um they're they need a little water today but um they finally got repotted so they'll love having more space and more sunshine oh it is hot now um all right so now we're into the front front yard garden um that i planted up two years back the blue stem native grass is looking great my lavender uh, really likes it here. I'm very excited about this. Um, that I found a spot that really likes lavender. Um, last year I only had a couple flower flowers and this year I can already see tons. Um, another cone flower coming up. Let's see, does this say which one it is? Oh no, <laughs> got a tiny Russian sage in here trying to keep going. Try. I think this is, oh, I wish I could remember. 
this is definitely, I mean, this is definitely a coneflower and it's a bright red orange. It might be cranberry scoop, orange cranberry scoop. I'll have to look it up. Um, this was a surprise. Uh, this is um, wormwood silver bullet that I planted last year thinking it was an annual. And wouldn't you know it, it came back. I'm leaving it there for now. Ah, this is where the petunias are gonna go once the tulip leaves finally die or I clear them out. They'll make a nice little floaty, frothy border around here. Here are the coral bells slash hookara cherry dolce. Looking amazing. Dianthus fire and ice. I've got a short video on that because they were just like stunning a couple days ago, but now they're kind of drying out. Blue star juniper. Um, pretty sure that's marshmallow puff uh, daisy. Which would be a nice just lovely, refreshing, white, fluffy flower. Um, and speaking of fluffy flower, uh, this is my little lime hydrangea. It definitely loves where I moved it to. It used to be behind the Oregon grape. Now it's in front of it and it definitely gets the sun it needs. So it might be finally time to prune it this year and give it some more shape. Oregon grape is gigantic. It needs pruned. Um, you can prune this guy at any time um, just take off some of the canes, but it also is a little sharp. Um, it is very holly-like. That's what I thought it was at first. So, uh, I got to get up the will to prune this guy. It's huge. All right, down here we got more hookara. This is the Caribbean Sea hookara. Um, lovely ground cover you see with yellow flowers is a sedum, S-E-D-U-M. Um, that came with the house. Um, and my mom said, let that grow. Mom said, let that grow, and I did, and I'm happy. She's pretty smart. She's always right. Um, and now it's got these pretty little yellow flowers and makes a nice ground cover. Blue fescue grass are coming back. Um, the mystery for this area is simply that I did plant two daylilies, maybe three in here, um, last fall, and I, maybe, I don't think that's it. We'll see. Haven't really seen them come up yet, but it's hard to tell because of the tulips. Stay tuned. All right, Mrs. Holly has berries. Mr. Holly is giant. More hookara. I can't remember which variety did. Oh, no, wait, boysenberry. I think this is boysenberry. Um, and then this is a hydrangea that came with the house. It is it ends up having blue, bluish blossoms, but right now it's just getting ready to bloom but it's nice and well-established. <sighs> Rhododendron is looking good. Um, I've been giving it some holly tone from Espoma, and I think that really has helped it um, put on some new growth with these nice shiny leaves. Fingers crossed, that would be nice. Um, and then the final thing I'm gonna just show you and end with, um, if I have room, is this um, Japanese forest grass. Um, originally, it's come back year after year. Originally, I planted it as this little swoop um, but clearly I need to do some pruning and weeding because you can't necessarily see the back of the swoop. But boy, I just love the texture of this grass and the color just pops in the shade. So definitely love it. Definitely recommend it. Definitely gotta stop the video right here because it's getting hot and I need a cool beverage and the ants are trying to get me. All right, so that is it for the June garden tour tons of stuff going on in the garden right now, such that maybe I need a phone with bigger memory <laughs> if I'm gonna do this for July. Um, or I just rambled about roses for far too long, which maybe there's no such thing in my book. Um, yeah, this is an exciting time of year because almost everything is in the ground. <sighs> but it's still a little chaotic because it takes a lot of energy to get everything in the ground and then you don't have time for much else. I'm not gonna show you the inside of my house, for example or the dishes in my sink. Oh, shade. All right, thanks again for joining me in the garden. Uh, stay tuned for July, because everything will have jumped up about a foot in size, and we'll have some new blossoms to go with it. All right, I'm gonna get inside, get a cool beverage, and go edit this video. Um, wishing you all a wonderful June, wonderful summer. Talk to you later, bye.